This morning, ESPN College Football Insider Expert and National Champion Trevor Maddich joined us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Roll that interview right now. All right, Trevor, BYU gets a 30-3 to win over McNeese on Saturday. Lots to discuss in this one. Lots of good. Some maybe BYU could have been better at, but uh, was BYU good enough, in your opinion, against McNeese? Uh, they were mostly good enough against McNeese. There's, they came off of a, a physical win over Wisconsin, and there's bound to be a bit of a letdown after that. They got some guys banged up against Wisconsin, and McNeese is not a cupcake. People need to understand, this team, McNeese, came into this game ranked 10th in the nation in the FCS. They've got transfers in from the FBS level, including a guy from Florida on the line. They've got guys that that can play the game, so it's not like McNeese was was a pushover. At the same time, I think BYU... (laughs) Overall, I was happy. Overall, I was happy with the performance for the most part. It's hard to complain about a 27 point win, but uh, BYU did some really nice things, especially in that second quarter. Uh, Kalani Sataki gets fired up at his team. BYU blocks a field goal. The Cougars scored 24 points in that second quarter. That changed the game. That did change the game, and I think McNeese came out and gave them their best, uh, their best shot and best punch BYU took to punch and kind of started to come back. The the problem was that the the passing game didn't you know, it wasn't up for things. The defense was smothering. They were fantastic. Special teams was for the most part fantastic. The running game had to deal with a uh, a McNeese defense that was crowding the line of scrimmage to stop the run and to limit the short pass. And so I think all those things were things that BYU had to overcome after that physical pounding that they took and delivered in Madison the week before. So I think those are the things that are really good. And I think that, you know, even though uh, BYU didn't look super sharp, uh, for a lot of that game, they did a lot of really good things against the team that came in and gave them, uh, that had the potential to give them a lot more grief than they did. Ultimately, BYU is 3-1, and one, which is incredible given kind of what we expected before the season. The Wisconsin win kind of changed things there. And now BYU is 20 in the AP poll, Trevor. Do you believe BYU is the 20th best team in the country? Well, uh, they could be. Uh, certainly, I think they are if the passing game uh, can evolve and grow. That, I think, is what's, what's holding them back. When you look at the teams that are behind them that people might think should be ahead of them, Mississippi State just got pasted by Kentucky. Uh, Texas Tech is a team that's got a great offense and no defense at all. Michigan State is behind BYU, and they're a team that has struggled in a lot of ways. I think BYU at number 20 right now is a a pretty appropriate place for them to be if the passing game is, you know, if it grows. If the passing game stays where it is, they'll fall out of the top 25 in a hurry. We're talking to Trevor Maddich of ESPN on a Maddich Monday. You've mentioned the passing game a couple of times. What do you see as the primary issue or issues right now with the passing game? The biggest issue with the passing game right now is drop passes. The thing about Tanner Mangum, he gets a lot of the, a lot of the grief. When you look at his stats this year, you know they're not terrific uh, by any measure. Uh, he's only completing 58% of his passes, and he's not getting the ball down the field enough in terms of yards per attempt. But those numbers would improve dramatically if the receivers caught the balls that hit them in the hands. We've talked a lot over the last couple of years about how the receivers need to understand that they're not in a game. They're not even in a football game. They're in a fight every time that ball comes down. And it's got to be their ball or no one's ball. It's got to be a proprietary, vicious, angry fight to catch that ball. And that's been a work in progress with the receiving core as a whole, although some guys have really stepped up in that regard. But from a standpoint of the stats for Tanner, if they just would have caught all the balls, or most of the balls, that they dropped that hit them in the hands, then the quarterback stats would be a whole lot better, and the team would be looking a lot better on offense overall. So right now, I mean, it's one thing to try to elevate beyond what you're really able to do right now. It's another thing just to eliminate the the mental 
mistakes and every dropped pass that hit you in the hands is not connected, not, not contested. Every one of those is a mental mistake. So right now for the receivers, my thought is, is don't worry about going out there and being Randy Moss. Go out there and just, if the ball hits you in the hands, catch the ball. And if that happens, it'll open up a world of possibilities for the Cougars offense. It's pretty wild that the longest pass play is 31 yards, and it's from Aleva Hifo to MLP, Moroni Lalu, Puta Town right. this season. Pretty oh, crazy. Play. Yeah, 31 yeah. yards, 3-1. and one. It all lines up, I guess. Yeah. I, I wonder about BYU's mentality, Trevor. BYU has performed really well in the two games that no one thought they could win. There were double-digit dogs playing a Heisman Trophy candidate on the road, Arizona and Wisconsin. Cal and McNeese, BYU expected to win. The pressure was different and was on. Now BYU has Washington, and perhaps that's a good thing because BYU is a 17-point dog despite being number 20 in Seattle. What do you think of perhaps the mentality uh, question there where BYU has played better as the underdog on the road this year? Yeah, I think, I think the win at Wisconsin will give BYU tangible evidence that they can go in there and beat Wisconsin. I mean, it's not out of the question. Now, ESPN's FPI, Football Power Index, only gives them a 7% chance to win. But they only gave them about a 9% chance to win, I think, at Wisconsin. So it's about the same odds. The difference is they'll be facing a team with two advantages over Wisconsin. One is that the, the, the offense is more balanced. I think Wisconsin definitely had a better running attack, but the combination running and balanced with passing and accomplishment of the quarterback is better at Washington. The second thing is the Huskies w- won't overlook BYU. I mean, the, that ranking in front of their name will get Washington's players' attention. Watching the tape of the Wisconsin game, they will see that BYU stood in there physically, punch for punch, against Wisconsin. And they'll know that this is not a team that they can overlook. And I think those are two disadvantages that BYU has. But the advantages, teams have been able to run on the Washington defense. They're really hard to throw against because that secondary is one of the best in the country. But the, the rushing defense has been good for Washington, but it hasn't been great. And I think that's where BYU has a chance to establish something on the ground. You know, to, to throw, the ball through, throw the ball against Washington will require, I think, some very creative game planning by the offensive brain trust, the play calling, the, the game planning, because they'll need to actually manufacture open receivers. Uh, but they can do that. There's all kinds of pick routes and rub routes and things that you can do, um, deceptive things with the tight ends that you can get guys open. But overall, BYU will have to establish the run, which they were able to do against Wisconsin. And against Washington, it's not out of the question that they could do it again because as good as Washington's front seven is, they have not been impregnable. BYU has some bad history up in Seattle, one and three. The one win was against a team that didn't win any games that year, and BYU needed Jake Locker to uh, have an excessive celebration penalty up there. But I want to rewind to some history there with Washington. So you're on the 84 National Championship team. You're a senior. You win the national title. Washington finishes second. The next year, BYU plays Washington. And, Trevor, it felt like this de facto who actually was the national champ game last year. Do you remember the result of said game? I don't remember the result. 31-3 to BYU. Well, there you go. So BYU emphasized it. So it feels like BYU has some history uh, to to pay back, I guess, in Seattle. And this is a big opportunity for, uh, for BYU. Big dog, but... If BYU won this game, Trevor, we're talking about top 15 and and some crazy things at this point, are we not? Well, we're talking about some real crazy things because if BYU is going to win this game, first of all, it will be because their passing game has stepped up. They won't win it one-dimensionally. But if they win it, part of the reason will be that the passing game came alive to a degree. And if that happens, BYU, their, their defense and their running game and their special teams are legitimately top 15 caliber and maybe better as they continue to grow. Uh, And so I think the interesting thing here is that there's an article on ESPN.com today about the different conferences and then the independents' chances for making the playoff, and BYU is mentioned. BYU is mentioned. I'm sending you blue goggles and that writer immediately. Yeah, no, listen, it's amazing. They said don't don't overlook or don't count out BYU – because the, the thinking in the article is that if BYU can knock off Washington and then win out, 
they will be uh, a one-loss team with two victories over teams that were in the top ten when they played them and probably will finish in the top ten at the, in the committee's final ranking. They will have had to have uh, won at Utah and at Boise if they're able to do this, and those are also very tall orders. I mean, this is, this is not a probability at all, and I don't want to put pressure on BYU that, that they don't deserve to have put on them. Just to say that you're talking about the possibilities that might open up if they're able to beat Washington. And you look at the rest of the schedule, it's really, really tough. But BYU's in a position to be able to have a borderline magical season. I'm not saying they're going to make the playoff if they beat Washington. There's still a lot of football left to be played, and beating Washington itself is a, is a high mountain to have to overcome. But if they're able to, based on the hypothetical that you just asked me, man, it, it, it's going to get interesting at least for a few weeks until they get to Boise. Absolutely. Can't wait. It's a ranked matchup. BYU and Washington coming up Saturday on Fox. Trevor, we appreciate the time, as always. I appreciate it, and I'll be watching in the Washington game when the ball hits the receivers in the hands. Not even a fight for the ball, but just a normal catch. Do they catch all of those? That's their first step back to respectability from a standpoint of the passing game. Absolutely. Thanks, Trevor.